Hello, I'm Claire from Creative The Otter Way. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up! here in the UK and I absolutely love that. I love all the things associated with it, the friendship, the sharing, the community um, and of course the products. Um, I've got a really lovely card to share with you today. Um, it's a bit of a wow on the inside. If you have watched any of my previous videos, I'm really keen on wow on the inside cards. I think when you're making the time and effort to give somebody a special card, then why not make it a bit of a wow on the inside? This is definitely that. I will show you that in a minute. It uses the very beautiful Happy Forest Friends paper from um, the new catalogue. Now, I love Stampin' Up, love their um, ideas catalogues. I mean, even on one page, you've got lots of different cards, but you really can't see the paper too much. You have to get your hands on it. So if there's an event near you that a demonstrator's holding, pop along and you will just see the amazing paper in person. So this card is made with uh, some of the designer series paper because it has got seams on it um, and it just takes out all the work for you. So this is just cut down on the front and then again on the back, that's one of the seams. The pages are 12 by 12, so you get lots of use out of it. And then if I open it on the inside, you can see where the wow comes in. So, ta-da! Isn't that amazing? Can you imagine giving that to somebody and them just being really wowed? So I love this paper. Um, love the bear, uh, love the little toadstools on the side. Um, very little stamping on this card, but I don't think it needs it. The paper is just so stunning, it shines on its own. So if I show you what that's like standing up, um, you can see it's like a, a free floating frame there um, and honestly it is much easier than it looks so we're going to do that together so do I need to tell you anything else before I put that thing? no just these little images here I've just fussy cut off the paper the toadstools I've fussy cut and because Stampin' Up! coordination is so good you just look on the back of your paper and it will tell you which colours coordinate with it so for this one I use Calypso Coral and hmm, I actually used now what was that Mossy Meadow rather than the Old Olive although they say Old Olive in the paper colours so just under the paper it will give you the colours they've got Old Olive I actually really wanted it to pop off the page so I've gone to shade darker Right, maybe I don't need to tie that together because I'll be talking about that in a minute. Now, the second one I'm going to demonstrate or make with you is one using the hues of happiness uh, suite. I'm actually only going to use the paper again and maybe a little bit of the stamp set for the inside. But we'll see how we get on. I like to try and keep my videos fairly short and just to the point. So... Here is what you're going to need, your ingredients. You need um, probably two pieces of A4 for your colour card base. And then I like to do a contrasting colour for the inside panels. So they're what you need for that. You also need one of the rectangle dies. Now the size that I use is the one, I think it's about four and a quarter by just under two and a half but i'll talk you through that in a minute and um, so let's get creative so this time i'm using this paper so i've looked at it and the inside i'm going to use the other bit now obviously i've already cut mine and i'll go through that with you in a minute but i just wanted to look at it and pick out colors that are going to make it pop off the page so I've gone for Granny Apple Green, that's going to be my inside panel. And then my outside is going to be Night of Navy. Because just when I layer it together like that, I just think it makes the flowers pop. But equally, it goes just as well with that one because you've got your Granny Apple Green in that. 
So that's what I've decided to do for my colours. Um, shall we start? So for our card base, which is the bit with the cutouts in, don't panic, I'll talk you through it. You need a piece of A4, uh, let's, let's do it from scratch. So a piece of A4 like this, and you are gonna take the long side at the top of your trimmer, and you're gonna cut it at five and seven eighths. So you just, if I bring that down a bit, get to five and seven eighths there, and then just cut it in half, which gives you this piece. Okay, so you end up with just your a normal card base. Then you turn it sideways, and this time you are gonna score it at four and one eighth. So just bear in mind to use your scorer and not your cutting blade. And that is one side of your card base, okay? Now, what we need to do is make another one of those and then join it together. But the other one needs to have a bit of a tab on it. So this time what you do is get your A4 sheet and you put your short end at the top. And this time you cut this on the short side at five and seven eighths. So that gives you that bit you don't need. So you just get rid of that. And then you're gonna turn it so you've got the long side at the top and you're gonna cut this at eight and three quarters. Okay. Eight and three quarters, like so. Take that bit away. You can use those offcuts for the panels in the inside to layer if, if you want. I'll show you that in a minute. Turn it again back so the long side is along the top. So similar to what this one was. And you're going to score at four and one eighth. And eight and two eighths. Okay, just like so. So you've got the same size there with an extra tab on the side, okay? So just burnish those slightly with your hands at the moment. So if I move those out of the way, so you should have one like this and one like this. Okay, you can see the extra little tab there. So what we need to do is cut some rectangles out of these. So let's move them out of the way and I will bring the rectangle in. So this is the one that's got the tab on the side. It doesn't matter which way round, it's a rectangle, so it doesn't matter. Now, again, what did I say? It was, let's check it for you here. Oh, I don't know that I'll be able to, hold on. So this rectangle, you could do a bigger rectangle. There's no rule in this. So that is just about two and five apes. And it is three and five eighths. So that's the size of that rectangle. You could do a bigger rectangle. You're just making the hole in the middle. So if I show you, you're making this bit here. Now, how do you get four rectangles all the same throughout? So you lay it on, you get your ruler. If you want to be really um, particular, and put it on where you think it should be. Use some washi tape. And um, what I tend to do with the washi tape is I peel it off and then just stick it to my hand or my jeans or whatever I've got on. So it's hardly sticky, just enough to hold, but not so that it's gonna pull the fibers off the card. And then I put that on and then I get my ruler. I do it with my eye first and think, mm, is that about right? Get my ruler and then I just go round and look. So that's an inch. That's an inch. I have already checked this. I'm not that good. This side is seven eighths. So then this side is almost seven eighths. So it's not enough for me to worry about. It will do. So I will roll that through the die cutting machine and then which i've already done and then what happens is that pops out like so take that off 
and you're left with that for another day but you've also got one die cut rectangle so now what I do is fold that in half and then I get my rectangle and I lay it underneath so you only have to do one spot of measuring now all I'm looking for is that there's roughly the same amount of dye showing through and when I'm happy I press that washi tape down I repress it on there I have another look and I think yep yeah, that looks okay I run that through the cutting emboss machine over and now I should have two rectangles cut out. Now you could do this with a um, knife and a ruler if you want to but basically you would do the same you would just fold it over and check. Look at that! Ta-da! I'm just amazed that it's in exactly the same space especially on camera. Now this bit looks a bit odd because it's got that extra tab bit on it. So it is in the right place. So I will now repeat that with my piece that doesn't have the extra tab. Okay, so now I've got four panels and I'm going to stick that together to make my long card. So I haven't shaped these at the end. Um, just because I'm going to stick that on like that and when I put it all together I just want it to look like it's meant to be it like that um, not that you noticeably see that there's two pieces stuck together now I use Tombow glue um, very sparingly but you don't need a lot because it sticks very strongly I also like the wiggle room so you're just looking to make sure they are lined up just along there and there. Okay, and then just press it down. Some people like to press with a block or an edge of something. It's pretty strong glue, so it's not too much of a worry. Now your join, not a very good card to see maybe, is it on camera? Um, have that at the back. Okay. So that is going to be like that. Just bring that up. This one is going like that. And that one is like that. Look at that. Ta-da. My rectangles are all lined up. I've got a bit of um, paper fibre on them that I need to brush off. But ta-da. Oh, I feel like I need a breather now. There you go. That's that piece of card. Now let's work on the panels on the inside. Take those bits of off me. So you need two pieces. Remember I'm doing this in a different colour um, so that it pops out of the middle. One of these pieces is nine by three and a quarter and one is eight and a half by three and a quarter. So if we take the nine by three and a quarter and we're going to concentrate on the long side and we're going to do some scoring. So we are going to score at Two and three quarters. Two and three quarters. Just had to check myself then because I thought I was going to be cutting it. Uh, five and a half. Five and a half. And then there's one more at eight and a half. Okay, so a bit like the outside card. It, you've got an extra little tab on this one so that ends up like that okay. like so so that was the one that was nine and three quarters now put that to one side just there now this one is eight and a half by three and a quarter similar measurements so two and three quarters two and three quarters and 
five and a half. And that's it. Okay. Lovely. So I am going to join them together and we're going to decorate them. So again, this will just be stuck on there and that will make the inside bit. So I'm not cutting the shape in the ends, I'm just literally gluing it together. Be careful at this point, you want the pieces, hang on, let me just glue it and then, I know we're supposed to multitask as, a, as women, but let me concentrate on this first. So let me just stick that down. Okay, da -da. So you will notice <coughs> on your card that these two pieces are slightly bigger. So these were two and three quarter, two and three quarter width. These are slightly bigger. You need them slightly bigger because they're tucked behind. So you don't see them quite so much. So can you see there's more of a gap on this one than there is between there? It will all make sense in a minute. <coughs> So I'm going to decorate these. Now, I've already cut my pieces um, because I know what I wanted to do. Um, and I do a love double layer on mine. If you just want to go straight and put your designer series paper on, that's fine. You don't need a layer. But I really want it to pop out of the middle. So the size for these cards is all the same, even though two are slightly bigger. Um, they are two and five eighths by three and one eighth. And what I've done is I've die cut navy, Knight of Navy, for everyone. And I'm gonna go along and stick them on. Okay, and then I've already decided that I'm gonna have one of those on there, one of those in the middle, because that's sort of hidden. I'm gonna have a white piece there that I'm gonna have a nice sentiment on and a white piece there that I'm going to have my room for my personal message. That one is going to go there. And I think I've lost one. There's another one there. Okay. Now you can decorate it how you want. This really is, it's your make. Um, I know there's lots of YouTube tutorials out there and um, we like to have a go at them. But the opportunity to turn that make into your own is how you decorate it. So whether that is with stamping, whether it's with fussy cutting out the paper, it doesn't matter. It's your make and whatever makes you happy and brings you pleasure, go for it. So that is going to go there. I'm going to try and really do this super quickly. Uh, do I want to stamp on camera? Shall I give it a go? <laughs> okay, right, so we're gonna put the navy blue bit on, but I'm not gonna do the white until I've stamped, just in case I do something horribly wrong. So this one, with this paper, it really doesn't matter too much which way round it is. Um, although now saying that, that does look a bit upside down to me. So I think I will do it, glue it on that way around not too much glue don't want it squirting out everywhere now this is one of those ones that's a slightly bigger panel so if i move that out the way i'm actually going more towards this edge and leaving a gap there you won't see it honestly i promise the other thing that i haven't said to you is um what i tend to do with darker paper like this um, that's going on to a dark card because the core of it is white sometimes it can make your card look a bit cheap so I get my Stampin' Up marker uh, I've already done this so you can't really see because it's dark but I just go along there just along the edge and it just colours the white in and then I add it right this one there oh I don't know neither it could be either couldn't it look that's quite a bit of a contrast. Yeah, I'm gonna do it with the yellow at the bottom. Looks like it was meant to be. 
So again, this one is the slightly wider one. So I'm over one side and I've got a bit of a gap there. The next one is just going to be a stamping one. So that's just going to go there. Oh, I feel like I'm speed talking now. Uh, don't put the white on. Navy blue panel. Oh, look at that lovely paper on that side. Such a shame to hide it. But this is equally as nice. I actually really like the tiny, tiny details on it. Makes you really look at your paper, doesn't it? Okay. So that goes there. That goes there. Right. Do we do the stamping next? Ooh. Shall we do that and then that panel in the middle is finished? So I'm using the Happiness Abound stamp set. I've got some post-it notes here for a very good reason. I am going to use the one that says, wishing you all the happiness you can imagine. That is just literally going to be stamped straight on. I always put my stamps on at an angle um, so that my eye looks at the stamp and not at the edge of the block. Because otherwise I find that I line up the block rather than the stamp. So that, hopefully, it's going to go there. And I don't press, but I do leave it a few seconds for the ink to soak in a tiny bit. So that's that. Job done. Okay. That was easy. So glue that on to there. So that's going to be... That's like the reason for sending the card bit, isn't it? And then this bit here is like where your personal message would go. So I could leave that blank, but I do know that it's for a birthday. So I take my birthday stamp. Let's put that in there. Okay. And I am going to do, because it doesn't fit across, I'm going to do happy and then birthday. So I'm going to cover up with the post-it note, sticky stuff there, and I'm just going to ink up happy, like so, okay? So I can press down the whole thing, but I know the only thing that's going to come out, fingers crossed, is happy. So I'm going to go for that in the middle. Happy? Yay! I am happy. Right. Now I'll just clean that off. And then put it again this time on the happy. Like so. And pick up ink on the birthday. The reason I put the post-it note is if I do get ink, I peel that off and it's gone. Okay, let's hope there's no blue left on the happy that I cleaned it enough. Birthday. Oh, look at that. I put my finger in it. Okay, that's fine because I can cover that with an embellishment. Like all good crafters know how to do. Check my fingers this time. They're a little bit inky now. And just move that over so there's a white frame all the way around. Okay, so that's that bit done. Now, let's have a look. So that is the inside panel done. Very happy with that. If I bring my piece back in, this all together. Now I haven't talked about the front panel. Should we do that first? Yeah, let's let's just move them to one side. So the front piece of the cards, they are really simple in that they're just layered like this. Okay. So you need 
two pieces and again I've gone for Granny Apple Green as a contrast and they are three and seven eighths by five and five eighths and then I'm literally because this isn't a seam on this paper I'm just going to stick those straight on um, I really want the well to be on the inside so I'm not too worried I probably will add some flower detail to these but at the moment I'm quite happy to just go with it like this. So there's one, they're both exactly the same, back and front. Okay, like so. Oh, this is coming together really nicely. I really like night of navy and the granny apple green just makes it pop okay so put those to one side because we're going to pull those in in a minute take your card like this have this as the mountain bit there like that and you are going to thread it through so just like this at the moment and this edge here needs to be glued behind here okay so all I'm going to do is put a line of Tombow, you could use double-sided, just on the designer series paper, not loads and loads, just a bit. And I'm aiming to get it in the middle-ish. So it's going to go like that and just enough so that I can't see the glue. Okay, and I'm just going to hold that in place. So if I turn that over and show you, it's just a oh, quarter of an inch maybe over, but that's glued firmly in place. Now, that goes through like that. That bit is going to be behind this panel, so that's why you don't worry about the gap. You do the same with this side. You're going to put some glue along here and tuck it under there. So it's going to be exactly the same. Probably a bit too much glue there. Okay. And again, I'm going to put that under about there. But what I'm also going to do is fold it up while it's still fairly wet. Just to make sure it does fold up. If that makes sense. So that feels like it's quite a way over that one. Let's move that back a bit. So make sure your card is down flat and then just press down, okay? Because you want it to be able to go into an envelope. Um, otherwise, what will happen is you, you're laying it out and you're sticking it and then when you try and close it, it doesn't actually close. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Ta-da! Now, it does sort of flop about a bit. To help with that, if we go back to the front, so you will see that this edge is slightly tucked under, but we need to stick the front bit, the front panel on. So we're going to put a little dimensional there, or not a little one, a normal size one, and one there. That is it. Okay, those, they've just come off of there. Then get your front piece, turn it over. And again, you're going to use dimensionals. And you use dimensionals because you're going to put your ribbon through, remember? Um, and you want it to all fold out really nicely. So I put one in each corner. And then I sort of guess where the middle is. You can measure. And I leave a gap like that. So my ribbon has somewhere to guide through. And I put it there. And I do it there, 
roughly the same. Why we then going to do this exactly the same so that my front and back panels line up? So the four corner ones, not a problem, just put them in the corners. And then the ones that are for the ribbon, they don't have to be exact. Oh, I didn't mention I was a stick into me, but roughly. So there and there, there and there. Get rid of all the back end bits. Oop. Get them stuck. I'm going to find these everywhere now, where am I? Bring that back over and just line it up. Like. Oh, I don't think that is lined up. Hang on. Good thing you can move them about a little bit. Oh, that's a sticky dimensional. So that's there. Flip it over. Do the same with this bit. Don't forget to put your two dimensionals on there. One there. And one there. Take all the back ends off. And then we will be able to put the ribbon in and we'll have our ta-da moment. So hopefully you've liked the video. Um, please do leave me a comment if you do. Love to chat to you. If you have a go at making this, please get in touch and share your make with me. Um, you can email me at creativelottaway.com. No, creativelottaway at gmail.com. Um, it's that um, multitasking again, I can't do it. Um, so I would love to hear from you. If you're in the UK, you can shop with me online for the products that you need um, or just get in touch. There we go, nearly there. So I feel like it needs a bit of, a bit more embellishing. It's a bit flat, but not flat, if you know what I mean. So ribbon, oh, ribbon. So we've all got loads of stash, let's not kid ourselves. Go through your stash, use up some of your ribbon and your embellishments. On this one, I'd got some of these beautiful sequins that, oh, I don't know how old they are, might even be only this year. But I've got a big pot of, a big tub of all different bits and pieces. And I always think, oh, I save it for a best card. This is your best card, so use it. This ribbon was an old celebration ribbon, but it's the perfect colour. This is a, I don't know, is it an old ribbon? Anyway, it's the perfect ribbon for this. So how do you thread it through? So you've left a bit of a gap. So you just thread it through. Oh, it's not going to do it now. Yes, it is, Claire. Go for it. Use the power of gravity. Oh, has it gone sideways? No! Oh, right, be patient. So put it through, put it through. Keep pushing it. It's there. Ta-da! Okay, do the same with the other side. Oh, I'm so relieved. <laughs> okay, do it this way. So again, use the power of gravity. And, oh, make sure it's not twisted. Push it down. Oh, that is fraying a bit. Let me cut that off. Let's sort that out properly in a minute. Just so I can push it free. And we are nearly there. At our ta-da moment. Okay, so there it is. You tie it in a bow there, and then they undo the bow and they go, oh, 
Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> they go, oh my God, wow, look at that. Happy well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.